Rip, 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 talking to you. Street Rush Show here, the Rip, Rip. And I have, of course, Matt Associate and a friend and pal from Justice for Hire, Jan Lucanus. Hello. Hey, hey. See, man, oh, you throw on the freaking intro and all that energy. That's a great intro. If it was ever mine to begin with. I felt like I was going to Super <laughs> Saiyan mode. Ah! Yeah, right? That's all we needed. <laughs> yeah, right now Matt is working on the next one where we get all the new people like Nada herself. Oh, my God. I still need to do a yeah. thing for that. Yeah. <laughs> You're not the only one. There's like five people that still need to do their video. Oh, good. I'm not the only slacker. I'm so I'm so glad. Yeah, even even Kamala uh, hasn't done hers yet. So. <laughs> oh. Yeah, and Kamala does uh, like film... Not- film things for a living yeah, yeah. Uh, film things for a living. <laughs> maybe that's why she hasn't done it yet oh most likely she's probably done. busy doing this you know mm. <laughs> so, so guys, Jan uh, dude you are uh, rocking and rolling here getting things ready uh, talk to us so what's going on well let uh, people know so today we are showing off the uh, the sneak peek of Justice for Hire, the story so far. You know, it's been a, a while uh, for, I mean, literally years. For the last five and a half years, we've been producing a show as a global community, and anybody can join the cast. I'm even letting folks on TikTok right now, uh, right now, know that we're we're live, and uh, they could be they could be watching this on the Bitten Apple TV channel. But, um, but yeah, we we just dropped the uh, on YouTube. And we'll drop it on the uh, platforms later. Uh, the first minute of the JFH, the story so far, uh, culmination of all of our work as a global community. So it's really going to set the tone for people knowing how they can collaborate with Justice for Hire, how they can create their own character, how they can uh, plug themselves into the storyline and be part of the cinematic universe. And they can do it right now from our app, justiceforhire.app right now. And uh, it's free to join, and like it's super fun. And we do obviously we, uh, like met Raf at uh, at a, a, an event that we do live events across the country. We shoot action scenes together as a community, and it's tons of fun. And we're oh, building so a show. Fun, man. So it's a uh, it's my honor and pleasure to be here and to, to be able to present this. And uh, I it literally was just uploaded right before we got on. And uh, that's just for hire app. That's the and and if you go on desktop, you'll see that you know, it says. Use your mobile, <laughs> the desktop version. It it does work kind of, but like really, it's built for mobile, and uh, it, it's it's super fun, man. Of course, we have our um, our our Justice for Hire uh, is our first show for real world, our first cinematic social network, and we're building out the company, and people can invest right now. We have five days, six days left to invest on WeFunder.com slash Real World, so you can own part of the company. This is like a public offering. It's the first time we've done it, and we really want people to know that we're all about community ownership, community creativity, people owning their own characters, people being able to tell stories together and grow as a community. So definitely help us push these numbers up. we got five days left, and uh, like I said, that's wefunder.com slash real world to own part of the company. And when we have you know, folks from Legion M, the president has invested in us. Um, oh, nice. So uh, that's Jeff Anderson, so big shout-out to Jeff. And... Uh, Andy Russell, a big venture capitalist, just came on yesterday and did an interview with me. So really, really cool stuff. But today is really about showing off this Justice for Hire story so far to, to, so that people can see why we're doing this company in the first place so we can make more shows like Justice for Hire where people are coming together all across the world, playing characters. We think the future of Comic-Cons is all about characters and stories that we've created as a community. Uh, the future of Netflix is going to be people starring in the shows and movies that they love. And um, we're, you know, we're building technology to do that. Dude, uh, it, it's excellent. I still love this idea. I, I, you know, when we did the whole thing at Urban Action Showcase, it was so much fun. You know, uh, and, and the concept, it, it, it's interesting because you're having the, per, the person be the character and the cameraman at the same time. And, and that, that's such an interesting concept. Well, you know, it, the Justice for Hire story lends itself to this type of, of, uh, of, of filming. You know, like you grab your phone and it, just like in real life, you know, if, you're, if you see a fight happening, if you see some, something going down, you need to be recording it. So in the Justice for Hire storyline, you <laughs> use Anymore, Everyone just grabs their phone and they just start filming it. Yeah, I mean, that happens all the time. So, so this found footage kind of aesthetic is a, is a major 
part of the series and you know we're really doing our best to future proof ourselves with the concept because what we're really talking about here is not simply an app that's like uber for heroes where you can hire a hero or become one and get paid it's really about a hero's culture and about people becoming heroes in their own lives and stepping up for each other and since that's what our storyline really is about uh, we're focused on making sure that the the app narrative grows with the community that's getting stronger and stronger in the sense of heroism like the only way to truly save the world is for everybody to be a hero so that's that's what we're we're going toward and and you'll see that in the, this uh this little teaser that we have coming up which is 4k ready now too i i just checked it <laughs> nice family of vigilantes. My dad, his best friend that's like my uncle, and his son that's like my brother. But I gave up that life to the burnout. Kind of After uh... years of helping people, I didn't have anything to show for it. I was broke, divorced, <laughs> living without my son, and teaching martial arts to survive. But when I witnessed a domestic violence incident that police couldn't respond to, look at me when I'm talking to you. I finally had my billion dollar business idea. I realized the only way to truly save the world is for everyone to be a hero. It's an app to hire a hero or become one of your it pain. Unites heroes and people who need them for your bodyguards. Hi, love your app. I knew in that moment that I and anyone that wanted to be a hero would never be broke again. Because justice is for hire. I'm going to be so rich. We're all going to be rich. Or at least after I help her for free because that's the right thing to do. You're itching, you're itching me. It's a little bit insane. Justice for Hire, the story so far. JFA started in New York, New York City, with me, Jan, a.k.a. Hero Number Zero. I grew up in a family of vigilantes. My dad, his best friend that's like my uncle, and his son that's like my brother. But I gave up that life due to burnout. After years of helping people, I didn't have anything to show for it. I was broke, divorced, living without my son, and teaching martial arts to survive. But when I witnessed a domestic violence incident that police couldn't respond to... Look at me when I'm talking to you. I finally had my billion dollar business idea. I realized the only way to truly save the world is for everyone to be a hero. It's an app to hire a hero or become one and get paid. It unites heroes with people who need them for your bodyguards. Hi, love your app. I knew in that moment that I and anyone that wanted to be a hero would never be broke again. Because justice is for hire. I'm going to be so rich. We're all going to be rich. Or at least after I help her for free because that's the right thing to do. Me some illegal so, so yeah, that 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 is. I just sent you the link that we could actually queue up. I realize that the shorts plays over and over. Um, so now you have the watch link. But but yeah, that that is the first minute of the story so far. And uh, the what will drop Friday will have. It keeps expanding. It keeps escalating. You keep seeing the community growing, and uh, people like around the nation like stepping up. And it, it's really really cool. Uh, I'm I'm a big big fan of the the score uh, done by Sage Michael, who's a, a, a dear like brother of mine, and uh, Sage is um, uh, he's done a bunch of stuff that that folks would know, including um, Lobby Boys, which with uh, he produced that album with um, Jim Jones and Mano, and uh, he's doing a bunch of stuff for J Dave East now and Fabulous, and has worked with Ludacris and all these folks. So he's like been doing our score since college for me. So uh, amazing, amazing guy, and yeah, it's super fun. There's a lot of like, that, there's a lot of real world crossover too. Like that guy right there at top, <clears throat> that's Brian Frumberg playing himself, and Brian is a uh, <clears throat> he ran or still runs Venture Out, which was one of the four most um, four most active, the fourth most active uh, startup accelerator in America. And um, so he, he, we came out of his program, and he decided to jump into the, the series, which is great. And, uh, you know, you see Stone there, uh, the, a.k.a. Stone, um, that we have all met at the Urban Action Showcase together. So he's right there. And, uh, you know, it's, it's folks from all walks of life coming together, telling a story together. You know, we have UFC fighters. We have like Angelique Zambrano, who you met at uh, Urban X Showcase from Law & Order, and uh, Arja Lee Jabbard from like Phineas and Ferb, and all these folks coming together, and then just people who pick up their phone and join. Dude, it's excellent. Uh, folks, uh, you didn't see, you didn't, you saw the video a couple times, only because we couldn't start it where it started. 
So I let it play twice. <laughs> I enjoyed watching it over again. I always I do that with things that I like where it's like, all right, I liked it the first time. Let me let me pay attention more the second time around. Yeah, you pick up things on the second on the second play. I do appreciate like the sense of humor going throughout the whole thing. Like that's yeah. a, a very nice touch. Thank you. Thank you. Completely. Yeah, we're really doing our best to 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 create a a tone that's like <clears throat> anime meets Arrested Development. <laughs> you know? I love it. I love that. Yeah, you didn't go like the super grim dark like DC route with it, which I appreciate. Well, you know, I think when we first started in. 2018 like really opening up the cinematic universe because there's stuff in here from my like college days you know so it's like it's really like it, I, I use footage from everything that's ever been done for justice for hire very intentionally um because you know really what we're doing is we're we're focused on showing lore you know that there's actually like a, a foundation to this vigilante justice narrative and that as a former vigilante I realized that my character realized that it, it didn't work out. You know, like it, nothing, nothing's really truly changed. If you're Batman sitting on the on a corner of a of a building with your cape in the rain, you know, like if he's still looking at crime years later, <laughs> and he's a billionaire and he's got all these assets that he could deploy in a different way other than punching. I love it. Like they say in uh, in Batman Lego, he's like punching poor people. I love that. It's such a yeah. hilarious, hilarious thing to say. It's like, it's, what? It's so on the nose, though. Like, excuse the pun. <laughs> it's 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 a, accurate. It really is, and it's like you know, there's got to be a better way. And I don't think that that punching is wrong. Like that's that's like I'm a martial artist. So like punching is part of it, and being able to take a punch and punch back to me is actually a big part of it. Um, but it's not the it's not the the solution necessarily. And to be able to say, hey, you know what, like we're going to fight and we're going to find a better way, but fighting's always the last resort. And I love the way Jackie Chan handled it or handles it where he's always running away from the fight. He's always trying to stop the fight. And I think that there's so much action to be had with that mentality of de-escalation and people coming together and saying, you know what, hey, we're going to step up and, and like do our best to 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 quell the uprising of whatever threat there is but if we need to we can you know throw hands <laughs> i love jackie chan and the way he does things and, and you know uh, he, and it's so funny because even with the cartoon that he did you know there was that constant running 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 and you're just running with him and he's just trying to, to get to where he needs to go or do what he needs to do and he also and, makes brilliant yeah. use of the scenery when he's running away which is always great to watch <laughs> Yeah, that's the thing that I'm, I'm really seeking from a lot of um, action, and because we're not seeing it, I think it's not. Let me put it this way: there are folks who do Hong Kong style action uh, cinema really, really well in the states. Uh, Eric Jacobus is one of them, and we've done a bunch of uh, the, like the superhero kung fu extravaganza for many years with Eric. And I would consider him to me he he should have been cast as Daredevil. That's how like amazing Eric is, and I say it all the time. Um, and he does a lot of like Jackie Chan style stuff and I'm like, you know, very brilliant guy and Jackie setting up the scene as you mentioned, being able to utilize the environment those are very particular uh, uh, very calculated choices as a filmmaker that Jackie makes and so, you know I love that I love what John Wick is doing and I you just have so much appreciation for the action genre but I really haven't seen the level of like thought and empathy that I'm, I'm personally seeking in my own life. And to be able to say, you know what, <clears throat> let's shoot action that's more thoughtful. And I think a gr one who's, who's done a great job is, um, did a great job is the Sherlock Holmes movies. If you saw the Sherlock Holmes, both of them, first one and two, there's a lot of thought in the actual execution of, of any move. And to me, that was so interesting because it's like, well, hold on for a second. If there's... That narration gives the audience context, and when you give the audience context, it feels more intense. And so, or it feels at the very least, it's a different type of intensity than uh, you know a, an average fight scene, or or the very least, a, an average good fight scene. Um, you know, I think that there's a bunch of different ways to build intensity. I think Avengers Endgame is probably one of the greatest examples we have in history of you know Captain America getting Thor's hammer. 
and everyone just flipping out and and those vi- those viral videos of fr- i remember like like tearing up like i had tears running oh down my, my face the movie to see in the Dude, oh my god it was everybody like, in the audience had like simultaneously went like, Whoa! Just like oh like, my god like, <laughs> yeah it was it was amazing but being able to build up to great moments to me takes so much tr- like true design and you know what we're doing with this story so far video and what we've been doing with our hero season for, with the from like the five episodes we released last year from november to december is really doing our best to set the foundation the tone you know this is uh, everything i'm saying really leads back to your comment on tone and the comedy that we're bringing into it but it's not comedy like ha 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 this is isn't this funny that we're doing this like the intention is to be like hey this is real and we actually have to find solutions. And there's a lot of humor in this pain. There's a lot of humor in this struggle. And if you just look at it from a certain way, we can feel a little bit more light about it and actually find a solution. And that to me is, yeah. is the, the intention. <laughs> it feels very much like it's not like slapstick, but it's more of just like gallows humor where it's just like, you know, the situation is terrible, but we have to laugh about it. Otherwise, you know, we'll just go insane. That's great. I love that. <laughs> It is terrible, and we have to laugh. Yeah. Otherwise, yeah. we will self-destruct. See, so Otherwise, everything's terrible. It's so funny, though, because, you know, uh, I feel like what, what, what the industry has turned into now is this dark, gritty stuff. And you sit there that. going, okay, yeah, well, it's dark, it's gritty, but I, 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 I don't want dark, gritty. Yeah, but, like, I have dark and gritty in real life. I don't need, I don't need it in my fiction as well. I do. <laughs> I knew to say that, Matt. <laughs> you know exactly what my themes are. I don't know why this is surprising. This, this yeah, actually isn't even me being contrarian. This is just normal. That's true. That's true. Yeah, no, it's not surprising. <laughs> well, last week we talked about. Uh, was it like the week before? We we talked about um, pitch meeting an honest trailer. And, mm-hmm. you know, the, I think they, I forgot what the, the term is now, but it's like post, postmodernism, something, I forgot, whatever, whatever, wherever we are in like a cultural artistic development cycle, we're in this phase where so much, where it's funnier, more fun, more entertaining to laugh at what we used to find entertaining and laugh at breaking it down rather than actually enjoy it. And yeah. I think that, that that part of breaking out of that cycle, uh, you know, I posted a video a couple of days ago uh, that you might have seen, uh, which was about being embarrassed as an entrepreneur. And this was this was about real world, and this was uh, about saying, hey, you know what? The challenges that I had going just onto WeFunder to offer the company to the public, you know, like it's just the challenge of getting it on that platform. And the, with the the investors and folks can you know look it up. It's it's pretty t- close to the top of all my uh, my personal and real world uh, profiles. But going through that and then not feeling like I could talk about it, you know, feeling like I, I had to hide it. Oh, there's some challenges. Well, how come you've raised so little capital on your campaign? Well, hold on for a second. Like we weren't even focused on the campaign in in the way that a person might normally be focused on it because of these these factors. And if I don't share those factors, then I get that question and, and I don't the person doesn't have any understanding. And if I can at the very least give understanding, then I'll feel better and whether or not me and the person I'm explaining to work together, collaborate in any way, at the very least there's clarity. And so going for that clarity on a regular basis in my life and in as a martial artist uh, relating to justice for hire and as a businessman relating to real world, I'm just seeking that that single line between thought, word, and deed everywhere, and so I'm like, you know what? Let me let me uh, let me put these videos out. Let me address action in a similar way, and that's that's how we run our our uh, choreography sessions Friday night uh, in North Hollywood. And anybody who's a part of the, the community is welcome. You're all, anyone, everyone's welcome as long as you've created like three videos on the app. You are you gain access to live choreography training for free, sponsored in Hollywood. Nice. Uh, so that's every Friday night, 7 p.m. at Shaolin American Self Defense Academy. Big shout out to Donnie Jeffco, Sensei Donnie Jeffco, uh, for that. So, um, but yeah, just being able to to be more honest with ourselves. That's that's really what real world's about. If you can look at yourself as a hero, you can transform yourself. Even as a villain, you can transform yourself um, by looking at yourself as something that you may not necessarily feel you are right now, and building a character around that and. Um, that's that's what we're all focused on, you know, that that honest portrayal, rather than laughing at 
you know, the, the how, uh, how cinema has distanced itself from its own reality, from, like, reality, you know? I do appreciate you being really transparent on, like, the struggle behind the scenes because that's something that a lot of people just don't talk about. Like, nobody wants to admit that they're having trouble. Nobody wants to admit that there's been, like, you know, a failure of sorts and, like... Just be able, just being able to go out there and say like, hey, you know, look at this campaign. This is why this happened. Like that's why that happened. Like a lot of people just don't do that. Well, it's 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 really interesting. Like assumptions. Like I and and being, you know, I came out of college. Uh, I went, you know, went to NYU for film. Came out of NYU with like all this like energy, and I was really really happy. And and I and I loved um, this this brightness I felt about myself and my perspective of the industry. And going in there and essentially dimming myself for uh, the expectations of others was really interesting, the assumptions that other people might make. And I just felt myself systematically doing that unconsciously for years and years and years. And then I realized, like, I, you know, I still can cultivating that light inwardly, but not showing it out as much. I'm like, hold on for a second. There are things that I know to be true. And then I'm watching other people who I'm sure don't know. Like I'm absolutely sure they don't have this information because I know their ex- I know the expertise that they claim to have, and that is different than this other expertise. And to watch people make assumptions about each other's expertise over and over and over again, and then systems that are built around expertise, such as you know a tech investor thinking that oh well this is Hollywood, so you should probably be focusing on these things, or Hollywood investor saying oh well that's technology, you should probably think about that. Just like you know, a, an action director, you know, thinking that that a a, a uh, uh, you know horror director might feel a certain way about something, like all these different like disconnects that in uh, by assuming something about somebody else, and so it happens in comics too a lot. Or like, oh, they everywhere. can only write this, or like they can only draw that. It and, happens like, all the people time. People are, are pretty well rounded. All walks <laughs> of life, and like just for me personally, I just got really like. Yeah, like I'm in the process. Like you're watching me now in the process of being like fed up with it, and actually expressing myself differently, and to express myself with the level of clarity I, I wish to, oftentimes takes some production. <laughs> you know, I mean, like you actually, gotta, like gotta edit out all the cursing. Yeah, well, not, not, not so much the cursing, <laughs> but like really just making sure that that I'm I'm being very intentional with what information how it chains together, because to me that's building a bridge. Like the way we communicate can build a bridge to understanding. And so, you know, whether it's our platform real world building a bridge between like the social media world and like the legacy Hollywood way of developing story worlds, because that's one bridge we're building or a bridge for a human being to use character and story to grow and change like what we're doing with Justice for Hire. There's folks all across the our community that have reached out to me saying, Hey, this has changed my life. I've grown up with you guys. We've only been doing this for five years. And people are saying they've grown up with us. Oh you my know? goodness! And I'm like, man, that's amazing. You know, like like dude, getting that shout out from um, from from Raina. Uh, she's like a big martial artist, and like you know things like that. Just it's really really cool to see people love and and have that have been like watching us grow. And that's all been happening while I was fe- feeling all this resistance from like all these different areas of like the startup world and. Hollywood and, and and I don't mean to villainize anybody. What I'm saying is that, that we're because people are assuming we're not necessarily communicating w- w- in the, an optimized way. We can't get the best out of each other unless we communicate in a more optimized way. So I'm doing my best to embody that realization by saying, "Hey, let me just speak differently." <laughs> you know. Very smart. Yeah, I agree with everything like 10,000%. Like if people would just kind of like listen to what the other person has to say instead of, you know, thinking all of these other things, like life would be a lot easier. Communication would be a lot easier. I really think we're going to have a golden age of humanity. I really do. Like I, I think, hope so. I think we're working toward that. And I think a lot of the challenges we face are, are just, you know, us working out the, you know, the, 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 the different, we're smoothing out the like sandpaper on each other. We're smoothing each other out. I like that. I like that metaphor. <laughs> I completely agree. And I, I'm hoping, you know, uh, not, not even hoping, there has to be a moment of enlightenment. You know, you, if you believe in the world ending, then you know that it happens after the moment of enlightening, which hasn't happened. <laughs> well, the, you know, I just think, folks. 
You know, I, I don't if, if, if we end after an era of enlightenment, it's a good note to end on. I gotta say, exactly. I'd I'd rather that than everyone killing each other. You know, have you have you guys read um, <clears throat> Grant Morrison's Twenty One Days? You have. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that's awesome. <laughs> okay, so 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 for those who have not Grant read, says, Man. so so for those who who are not uh, aware of Twenty One Days, Twenty One Days. Uh, was put out, it's essentially a story Bible, and it's a story Bible for Grant Morrison's retelling of the ancient Indian text, one of the ancient, the lo- oldest texts known to humanity, the Bhagavad Gita, and it's a, it's a big uh, you know, I, I was raised on, on those stories, and um, oh, so was I. oh, amazing, okay, great so, so 21 Days uh, he did it with, uh, with Liquid Comics which was Virgin Comics with Deepak Chopra and, and, and Gotham Chopra and then they went changed the Liquid Comics and then Dynamite co-published this book called 21 Days which I can I can move out of here and grab it but essentially like it's it's my favorite artist Mukesh Singh did, did the art and I, I, found, I got a chance to speak to Mukesh he's an amazing wonderful guy uh, who I love he, he sends me like, like really encouraging notes he's my favorite artist period I, like, like, I want to have Mukesh Singh art all across my, my home uh, and the art that he puts in there is amazing. Um, but I will say that, that the reason I'm mentioning this is along the lines of the end of an age of enlightenment. <clears throat> so the story of the Bhagavad Gita takes place at the end of a golden age. So it's the final battle, the entire book, the entire series, which is a story Bible for a television show pitch that Grant Morrison and Deepak Chopra were working on, is essentially the end of an era the end of the golden age, the age, the age of the superhumans, these gods, deities, gods and goddesses with these amazing, uh, you know, weapons. Oh, 18 days. Oh. oh my gosh. 18 days. I thought it was yeah. 21. Look at me. My yeah, math. It looked like 21 days. And I was like, wait, why is 18 days coming up? And oh. then I clicked on it. Oh. You know, and, yeah. and then we got Raph over here nodding. He's like, yeah, 21 days. Yeah. I'm remembering it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 18 is such a weird number. So, yeah, so, I gotta say, eighteen. You know, as as much as I like it, because my birthday day, uh, it is a weird number. <laughs> What's your birthday day? Nine eighteen. Uh, okay, there we go. Oh, okay. you know so you should have remembered that. Is. I should have. That ain't gonna happen. <laughs> well, Dude, I, 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 for some reason, twenty one just like sounded right. I'm like, okay, twenty one. I think I might be thinking like, of like a number. like a well, one of those. It was a twenty one. No, it's sixteen blocks. That's like, wasn't that Bruce Willis and Most Deaf? 16 blocks or something like that? What's 16 blocks? Would, There's 16 blocks, 16 which is definitely not 16 blocks. The movie 16 Blocks, that takes place in New York about getting like a, a criminal like 16 blocks away yeah, from like... Yeah, 16 blocks, yeah. Yep. It's not actually 16 blocks. If you live in New York, it, it, is, it is not that. So, <laughs> oh, dear. It's really disrespectful. <laughs> you know? Oh, dear. How many blocks are we really talking about? I think here? we're talking about. I, it could be like twenty-one. Honestly, it's possible. Yep, mm. Bruce Willis and most deaf. There we 16 go. Blocks. It's a phenomenal mm-hmm. movie. From I, I, from I remember, like, I remember a good feeling. My feeling might have just been wanting to see most deaf in more films, which did not really happen outside of like Galaxy Quest, which is. He was in Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy yeah. too. Oh, okay, he? that's that's what I meant. Hitchhiker's yeah. Guide. Look yeah, at me yeah, over yeah. here. <laughs> Galaxy. Galaxy I know things. That's Galaxy Jump. <laughs> I'm over here all like <laughs> playing with an action figure while I'm talking to you guys, so maybe that's why. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> I'm talking about the action figure. Oh, yeah, no, I got, I got Cyclops I got Cyclops doing a, a rear naked choke on Ninja Spawn over here. So, it's, um, <laughs> I, I got to take a photo for my son because like he, he, he gets a, a, a McFarlane figure every month for his, um, nice. as like his allowance. Uh, to draw regular McFarland art because he's the, he makes fan art every month and he is um, he's right now the most featured fan artist in the history of uh, the thirty two year history of Tom McFarland's comics and so uh, you can show that right now. Uh, yeah, show that <laughs> so this is really special this is the seventh time he's been featured and this one I'll just pull this out because I I gotta I gotta give him a shout out my son Jet so this is uh, Gunslinger number twenty eight. And Jet's very first piece of, of fan art was Gunslinger Spawn with wings in front of a uh, moon. 
and it was like a little like fan art that he did, and that was the very first piece that got featured in um, in Todd's books, uh, like in 2022. And so right. he's featured in this book, and it just so happens to have Gunslinger for the first time shown with wings. And nice. so I was telling Jet, I'm like, hey man, it's quite possible that you were the first person to ever draw a Gunslinger like that in print. And so now he's like oh. reconnected. Like this is his fan art in the back, but but um, you know, super fun stuff. And then today, today I had to go and pick up a couple issues of Gunslinger Thirty Two, with this beautiful Sergio Le- Leone cover, uh, inspired cover, uh, because there's a a uh, letter from a fan in the back here that shouts out Jet, my son, and just really really cool about. I want my son to understand that when you make art, it impacts people and yeah. so I picked up multiple copies so that he can have this in his room and and remember that hey when he puts you know pen to paper it affects other people's lives amazing it's it's so easy to forget that like as someone who does art for a living it's so easy especially when you're doing stuff by yourself to think that like oh nobody's gonna see this it doesn't matter so like it's great to have that extra little push from someone from the outside who's like hey I love your stuff like keep being you it's it's amazing, you know. The, the, do you guys follow J T Barnett? Highly JT. recommend following J T Barnett. So J T Barnett is a uh, he's like a social media, he's got like a agency advisor kind of guru, and um, he's he makes some really interesting uh, videos, and he just said something that I really appreciate. He's like, make your content for just one person. If you're serving one person, that's like focus on that, that positive feedback loop of just giving to the person that cares. And when, <clears throat> I think especially when you think Hollywood and you think scale and that you can get so um, distracted by all of these things that actually don't matter because like it, by focusing on these big, big things, you forget about potency. The potency is actually what creates a big thing. And so um, just that thing that, that actually like serves your, your core that you know you are your audience and by serving yourself in a certain way and saying things that others may need to hear that you need to hear it's going to just have ripple effects and and the more i started applying that to justice for hire the more i started seeing um the impact in, that we can make as a community and so that's uh you know i, I, I appreciate jt for reminding me of that that's something we all need to be reminded of because you know I, I feel like one of the things you're you're doing again is that you're you have this excitement you have this energy you have this get up and go and um, when people talk to you they can feel that and that's always important especially as the person who's doing this project because you're you're, you're um, it's like we say all the time with people at Comic Cons they sit there at the table and you can do a couple of things one of the things is you sit there and you don't engage with the audience. Which means that you're, you know, you're not going to sell.